What is going on guys, it is WrestleAmia here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including huge names returning for WrestleMania, is The Rock creating a problem for TKO, the possible reason why Bray isn't going in this year's Hall of Fame, a WWE star is tumor free, the WWE use Asuka to bury Goldberg and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at huge names returning for WrestleMania. On top of today's news are rumors that WrestleMania 40 could be a star-studded affair unlike any before. The showcase of the Immortals always features big names, but this year's show could feature an all-star parade of Hall of Famers and future Hall of Famers. Now, this isn't a shocker because this is the first WrestleMania under the TKL Holdings regime and the company is likely looking to make the best WrestleMania yet. This week's Wrestling Observer newsletter has details on who fans could see. Nothing is official, but the belief right now is that Steve Austin, Undertaker and John Cena will have something at WrestleMania in some form. At press time, there's no creative locked in for Cena and Austin at this moment, or if there is, it's a well-guarded secret. The Observer report noted that some factors are likely to play in the likelihood of appearances by above-mentioned stars. A lot depends on how much they're willing to do and money. Cena is free, but depending on what acting stuff he has and how quick after he is filming would determine how much he can do or can't do for insurance reasons. Austin and Undertaker would be based on willingness that they have. While one or more of these superstars could appear, it's unlikely that any would wrestle. Undertaker has remarked in interviews that he still struggles with the urge to get back in the ring. Austin has talked about working another match, but why would the WWE bring him back for a match with WrestleMania just two weeks out? Likewise with John Cena. But that doesn't mean fans should give up on the idea of seeing these legends, but it's likely any appearance won't involve wrestling other than a stunner or attitude adjustment. Next up is The Rock creating a problem for TKO. Is The Rock ruffling feathers backstage? Well, a new report from the Wrestling Observer suggests some wrestlers may be upset with the amount of leeway The Rock gets in cutting promos, chiefly him being allowed to use profanity that other superstars are banned from using. There's been talk among talent and outside with some frustration about the double standard involving Dwayne Johnson. There may also be some concern about how much time Johnson takes when he cuts promos and that his 20-minute promos cut into full-time wrestlers' TV time. While that may be true, Meltzer pointed out, but of course there's a double standard involving Dwayne Johnson and always will be when it comes to someone with that level of star power. This exists in wrestling just as it would in Hollywood. Wrestling has always had double and triple standards depending on one's position. The WWE's goal to increase viewership and bring mainstream publicity to the company, which in turn may add new viewers, and management obviously feels The Rock can do both. But that being said, The Rock is given additional opportunities other wrestlers don't get. According to Meltzer, some also complain that they could get more traction on television promos and in social media if they had those handcuffs taken off them, and the handcuffs in this case are only off for Johnson, and even people like Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes have to adhere to the policy, although Rhodes was allowed a lot more leeway in his comeback promo on Raw. Social media has become a fantastic way for wrestlers to connect with their fans, but as you might expect, the WWE, and it's worth mentioning AEW also, doesn't give wrestlers the freedom for what they can say and do on social media. The Rock situation may be frustrating for wrestlers, but as Meltzer pointed out, there are exceptions for top talent in mediums besides wrestling. Depending on TKO Holdings' approach to management, it may be happy with any short-term gains The Rock provides without caring about any long-term losses such as disgruntled wrestlers or failing to create new stars due to lack of TV time. Next up, a possible reason why Bray Wyatt isn't going in the Hall of Fame. Our fans are wondering why the WWE chose not to induct Bray Wyatt into this year's Hall of Fame class and could have their answer. Dave Meltzer is reporting how the upcoming Peacock documentary on the late great Bray Wyatt is tied to the decision. They announced a new Peacock project, a documentary called Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal that will debut on 1st April. I was told this had something to do with the decision not to induct Bray into the Hall of Fame this year, that this year that they were doing the big documentary for him and would induct him later. Meltzer provided some details on the documentary itself. Undertaker builders Mark William Calloway will be doing the narration. They interviewed his family as well as Hogan, Cena, Lynch, Triple H and Taylor Rotunda, Bo Dallas. There are also interviews with him throughout his career and never seen before footage. Do you think WWE should have inducted Bray into this year's Hall of Fame? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, WWE star Tuma Free. 
There's great news for former WWE superstar Maurice as she's reporting some recent surgery went well. The two-time former Divas champion updated her fans via Instagram saying, As you know, two weeks ago I went into surgery to have my ovaries, uterus, tubes, cervix, omentum removed. I also had staging removal of the lymph nodes in my abdomen to see if the disease had spread. Pathology confirmed that it had not, which is amazing news. The good news didn't end there as Marie added, The fact that we not only found this, but found this at this manageable stage is unbelievable and literally saved my life as this would have most likely been lethal. Marie said that she'll be spending her time recovering and following up with specialists. She also encouraged women to trust their instincts when it comes to their health and to be their own advocates. Next up, did WWE use Asuka to bury Goldberg? A big bad Bill is angry and he made some bold accusations while appearing on Tim Green, nothing left unsaid. Goldberg blasted Vince McMahon for not sticking to his alleged promise to give him a retirement match. Something tells us that this is likely the last thing on Vince's mind right now though. But Goldberg also said, Will a girl beat my winning streak? Beat my undefeated streak? Yeah, I can't even remember. Asuka is her name? Some Japanese girl. And they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happened that it culminated when I got there, right? And then it just so happened that every single wrestler used a spear in their moves, right? Pretty iconic that happened when I got there, right? So that's how they do it. Goldberg's claims seem difficult to substantiate. Firstly, comparing his win streak to Asuka is difficult since WCW played fast and loose with it. Second, the spear was used by other wrestlers long before Goldberg debuted in WWE. I mean, the guy has literally three moves in his arsenal. Wouldn't it have been likely that they have taken one of them? But Asuka has replied to Bill's comments, but a past tweet surfaced where the Empress of Tomorrow acknowledged her respect for Bill. Not surprisingly, Asuka's allies have expressed support for her on social media. Next up is Netflix Vince McMahon documentary Still Alive. It was Netflix, which recently acquired the streaming rights to Royal beginning in 2025, still going to air its documentary on Vince McMahon. The project was reportedly iced after McMahon's 2022 hush money scandal, only for Netflix to reveal it was still in the works. However, given McMahon's latest scandal, is there any chance of it airing? Meltzer discussed this in the latest Observer saying, Regarding the Netflix documentary on Vince McMahon, which at last word was to be a six-part series, some thought with the Netflix $5.2 billion deal with TKO and the Janelle Grant lawsuit that maybe Netflix would just scrap the thing. That isn't the case, but they obviously have to change the direction based on what happened. At one point, the plan was for it to be out sooner, but it's not going to be out during Mania season. But it is still planned to be released in 2024, but no time frame is finalized. Vince McMahon supposedly had no say in the documentary's final cut. And that could be the case, but how will it benefit Netflix to air a documentary on McMahon while he's currently engaged in a major lawsuit and under investigation by the federal government? It's often said that there's no such thing as bad publicity, but airing a documentary that may expose McMahon's scandals, assuming the documentary does take a closer look at McMahon's life and doesn't gloss over his many scandals, while also airing WWE content, could be a little problematic. And finally, where's John Moxley? And last but not least, wondering why John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli aren't competing in AEW's tournament to crown a new World Tag Team Champion? Well, after all, Mox and the Swiss Superman recently defeated former tag team champions FTR, which certainly would qualify them. Turns out the Blackpool Combat Club member is taking time off from AEW, hence his absence from the tournament. Wrestling News notes that Mox has plans booked in Japan and Mexico. Rightful Select is reporting Moxley asked for time off and AEW knew about it, hence his absence. This follows previous speculation on Moxley and Castagnoli's absence and the idea that AEW didn't want the BCC members to win, but they didn't want anyone going over them. This update should dispel any speculation about why Moxley and Castagnoli aren't competing. If AEW wants, the two can always challenge whichever team wins the titles. But well, there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.